I have here today the Blackmagic Design Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. What I want to do is give you a menu walkthrough so you can see what's in store for the menus, then give you an idea of the settings I like to use for filmmaking. So let's just jump right in. First at the top here, we're going to focus on the main screen overlay here, which gives you really all the most essential components. So at the top left, we have the various overlay settings, such as Zebra, so you can toggle when you want to be notified, if you're getting too far to clipping your brights, you can go all the way down to 75, all the way up to 100%. I keep it at about 90. Next, we can toggle on or off our focus peaking. Then when you have something in focus, it tells you by giving you an outline of, a colored outline is what I have selected red. We can change those settings a little later. We'll get deeper into that when we get into the menus. Next up we have, we can toggle on or off our aspect ratio guide. There's various settings, uh, that like standard settings like 16.9, 4 to 3, cinema settings, things like that. I keep it on 239. Uh, if you tap it to, though, you can also make your own custom frame guides. Additionally, we can have toggling on and off grid. So if you want to shoot by rule of thirds, always good. Then you can also toggle on or off crosshairs or a dot for the center point. I like the crosshair. Also, you can toggle on a safe guide area so you can stay within a certain, uh, certain guide range here. I don't really use that, but you have the option. Finally, false color. False color is good. I, you really only want to toggle it on or off now and then. It shows you if you're uh, too bright or too dimly lit. See, if we turn ISO all the way up, that red and yellow means we're way overexposed. You want to be with the light grays and preferably the pinks and the greens. Let's go back to ISO 400. And let's toggle off. Let's toggle off false color. Next, let's move into frame rate. You can uh, scale all the way up to about 50 frames a second. Um, that's for your project settings. You can then toggle on for off speed settings, things like that. We, whoops, that uh, I accidentally scrolled over. That's for adding metadata to your clips and everything. And I'll get into that, into that in a second. Uh, frame rate though, let's turn that off. I just like to keep it at 24 frames a second. Shutter angle, you have 180, which I would recommend you just stay at. I, I never used any of these other settings. 90, 360. You can also turn on auto exposing with the settings also for shutter plus iris or iris plus shutter. I really don't mess with that. So I stick to 180 degrees. Have our iris settings, which you can manually set just by pulling this. And I just keep it, yeah, whatever, <laughs> keeps it uh, uh, exposed. You can also just press this iris button here for auto exposure, as well as your toggling, uh, but I don't. I just do it myself. Time code here, which tapping it, it looks like I've stopped the time code. It just stops you viewing it because here we're at 33 seconds. Let's wait a few seconds. We were at 33 seconds, but now the time code is still ticking away. 39 seconds. Let's go to ISO now, various presets, natives are 400, 3200, and you can toggle anywhere in between all the presets, all that. I try to be 400 as much as I can. White balance, all these beautiful settings here. You can also custom white balance for your Kelvin values or auto white balance. Very handy. So that's all the most important things across the top. We also have our battery level, just keeps you in the know of what battery source you're using. So here I have uh, an, an off-camera source battery and uh, tells me how much battery source I have left. So very helpful. At the bottom here we have more indications of uh, less things that you can really manipulate and more things with just telling you like what your lighting is at. Have the histogram here, record button, our media. If you tap the media it tells you what you're shooting on, how much space you've used, how much space you have left, and you can format it as well. See here, this one tells us we've got our Samsung T5, an external uh, external 
uh, hard drive that we're recording to. And finally, our audio bars, which you can view. If you tap the bars, then you can set the channel gain settings as well as the volume for playback. Now let's go deeper into the settings and take a look, see what kind of record settings we can do. We have basically very, very simple layout, very easy to use layout really that Blackmagic gives us here. So they have the record settings, monitor, audio, setup, presets, and LUTs. Uh, very simple, very straightforward. Within each menu that you can then toggle left and right. So let's stick within the record menu. This is where I do a lot of messing around with, uh, just depending on what kinds of uh, frame rate or frame rates I want to use, what kind of resolutions I want to use, codecs, things like that. So here we have the Blackmagic RAW setting. With, within that, you have constant bitrate as well as constant quality. Constant bitrate gives you, as the name suggests, continual bitrate uh, at a, a steady flow of data. Uh, and then you can have various uh, compression rates 3 to 1, all the way down to 12 to 1. With constant bitrate, if something happens uh, on screen or in, in whatever's going on in front of the lens, if there's a drastic change between what's going on, uh, constant bitrate can kind of be a hindrance there. You might start to see compression artifacts, things like that. If, if suddenly you have confetti or snowstorm rolling through the screen, um, because it's trying to keep that constant bitrate, um, but there's all these different things going on now in front of the screen. Um, so if there's a case like that, you want constant quality, which will control uh, control that and not uh, break down or, or start to show any kind of artifacts if uh, there's, there's drastic changes in what's going on on the screen. So with those choices, with constant quality, you have Q0 and Q5. Q5 does a little bit more compression. So for highest quality, Q0. It's always a trade-off with between uh, your size of your file and the quality. So with that, I, I typically shoot at constant bitrate unless I know I'm going to have uh, a lot of drastic changes, things going on in front of the lens. Um, then I'll do the constant quality, but constant bitrate I usually stick at, and I usually do 12 to 1. <laughs> I mean, 3 to 1 gives you a great quality, but I do bind my file sizes, so personally I do 12 to 1. You also have ProRes options. These are good for if you're shooting at uh, a lower resolution. You'll see that it grays out all the higher resolution, so you only have choices between 4K, Ultra HD, and HD. So if I am shooting in HD, I'm shooting in ProRes. And with Blackmagic RAW, it limits your lower resolution settings as well. You'll see the 4K, Ultra HD, and HD are grayed out as well. And in addition to that, um, it's good to know that when you're recording in Blackmagic RAW, it's never downscaling the, the sensor. It's only cropping in. It's showing you exactly what the sensor is seeing. So when you're at full 6K, you get that full sensor readout. When you're at 6K241, that's a little bit cropped in, kind of cropped narrower like a cinema mode, but not resizing or downsizing what's going on uh, or what the sensor is seeing. Same with all the others, 5.7K, 3.7K, uh, that, that, oh, that one's anamorphic, and 2.8K, 17.9. Now with ProRes, you do have options. See, so let's click HD as far as the sensor area that you're seeing. Since ProRes is not raw and there is compression going on, it, it can compress it or downscale the image. So when you have the 6K sensor area, area you're using that full sensor area. Now if we click 2.8K, can we go all the way down to HD? No, we can't. 2.8K, and let's go back out here. See this Tetris lamp I have here? We're pretty well cropped in because we narrowed the sensor area. Let's go back to 6K. We're further out. We can see the whole, we can see the whole Tetris area. We can even see my slate board here. <laughs> so I like working with a wide area. And side note, really great thing about this camera is you do get that wide field of view as compared to its brother, uh, which gives you a little bit narrower field of view. However, there's always just trade-offs, um, which I'll get into in a different video. Uh, so also on the topic of ProRes and HD and everything, I'll talk about off-speed shooting and high frame rate shooting. So 
So if you want to do slow-mo, to get the slowest slow-mo or the highest frame rate shooting, you got to shoot in HD and you got to, well, ProRes HD, your only choice there. And you want to shoot at 2.8K, which is windowed in a little bit, but it will let you get all the way up to 120 frames a second. See, there we go. Now we're ready for slow-mo shooting. And I think I'll do a whole another video on slow-mo shooting because depending on what what resolution size you're at, it really changes um, what level that you can, uh, what level of frame rates you can shoot at or the highest frame rate you can shoot at. And some are even limited, like here it's, it's sticking me at 50 frames a second. So I'll get into that in a different video, but there's lots of, op of options with off-speed shooting. Uh, additionally, with just regular frame rate, you can also toggle your project setting frame rate here, go all the way up to 50 frames a second. I just keep it personally at 24. I skipped this part here, but we'll get back to this. This is the dynamic range. You have choices for video, extended video, or film. Video is the most limited dynamic range. It already compresses down the darks and the highlights into a, a viewable image, which is great for delivering footage right out of the camera and not having to post-process the footage. Perfect for it. Film, on the other hand, is the opposite. It comes out of the camera with a very gray, muddy look, but it has, <clears throat> excuse me, it has all that color information there, so you can mess around with it a lot in post. It gives you the most latitude which I personally like using that. Extended video is kind of an in-between, which I haven't really played with because I figure either one or the other personally. Uh, so yes, I keep it on frame rate. Uh, I'm sorry, I keep it on film, 24 frame rate. Uh, now we have choices here for what external drive we are recording to. Oh, here we have it toggled for external drive. You can also toggle on or off if you want to stop recording if a frame is dropped. And we do have that on. I typically do have that on. Finally, we have, if we toggle over one more, arrow over, uh, we are at our time lapse functions here. So you can turn that on. You can set how many frames you want. You're, you're capturing one frame, rather, every however many seconds or however many frames. Uh, so yeah, just depending on if you want a, a shot every 10 seconds, a shot every 10 minutes, that's as high as it goes there, 10 minutes. Internal detail sharpening, uh, that's dependent on if you're shooting RAW or ProRes. So I'm guessing we're on RAW right now because it's all grayed out. Uh, but here, I'll let's go back to ProRes so we can take a look at it, have it on. You can have medium, high, default. I really don't want to do any kind of internal sharpening regardless of what pro, uh, what codec I'm shooting at. Then you can record a LUT to a clip. Uh, again, that's kind of baking in, uh, in compression or, or baking in a look rather. Uh, same as like the de detail sharpening or shooting in video. You're, you're kind of setting yourself to a certain look, uh, which can be good if you're handing over footage immediately to the client or to whoever, but I would always keep that off and color grade later or apply LUTs later. Let's move on here to monitor functions. Here you can set what you're seeing on what display. So we can change our LED settings here. So status text on or off, display meters, codec and resolution, screen brightness, HDMI settings there as well. Whoops. Actually, yes, it's going to say arrow over, and we have even more LCD functions. I can turn clean feed on or off, display LUT on or off, I'll keep that off, zebras on or off, focus assist, all the things that I was messing with earlier, frame guide, grid, safe area, false color, HDMI, same options. Now with both, we can adjust the uh, the frame guide, again, that was on the main screen. The opacity of the guide, which I find interesting. So yeah, I turn that at about 50. Uh, if you really want to 
be hardcore and just stick to the frame guide for your cinema scope that you're at. Turn it to 100 so everything's blacked out. See these stark black bars here, very cinematic looking already. Uh, but yeah, I'll keep it at keep it at about 50. Okay, focus assist. So you have peak or colored lines. I like to use colored lines. And focus assist level, low, medium, high. Focus color, I have it on red, but you also have green, blue, white, black. I wouldn't use white or black, really. I feel like those are too common or, or too basic of a colors where red is very distinct. Obviously, if what you're shooting is red, um, switch it to an opposite color, blue or green or something. Probably green. Um, zebra levels, again, we've... Uh, we've set that setting already, but you can set it here as well. Let's arrow over one more. Uh, you have your choices again, which we've played with these on the main screen for thirds, and your crosshair options, your safe guide, and if you want to squeeze anamorphic. Audio settings. Here, again, <laughs> just like on the front of the screen, which is what's great about this camera. You can make so many settings just right on the screen. They keep everything right where it should be, uh, or you can always dive deeper into the menu. But uh, yes, again, here is where you can change your audio settings, but you can also do things like turning on phantom power for XLR. We don't have anything plugged in right now, but you can toggle that on if you have a, an XLR mic plugged in. You can also set your headphone volume and your speaker volume. Then we have choices for your audio meters, PPM, negative 20 decibels, or PPM, negative 18 decibels, which I'm not 100% sure what that is uh, <laughs> exactly, to be honest. So setup, this is just basic, this is just basic setup, uh, date and time, language that you're using, uh, time code drop frame, uh, here is your uh, shutter measurements, so you can do shutter angle or shutter, shutter speed, I mean shutter speed, that's kind of back in the uh, DSLR era, uh, I just typically personally like shooting with shutter shutter angle keeps things simpler for me. Uh, additionally, you have your, uh, they call it flicker free shutter based on 50 hertz or 60 hertz. That's the uh, flicker refresh rate of, of uh, TV screens and computer screens. Uh, depending on really, I believe the country you live in, uh, there's different rates at which those those screens refresh. And I believe 60 hertz is uh, is the American setting. Let's move on now to the preset functions. Here is where you can set the presets uh, and the toggle buttons, or hit toggle, and where you can set the buttons across the top here. Uh, they're <laughs> right on top of the camera. They're a bit out of the frame here on my camera. But believe me, they're at the top. <laughs> I'm sure if you're watching this, you probably have the camera or are close to buying it. So we have function buttons one, two, and three. So let's set function button one. I have it on false color, but you can set it to zebra, and it's going to show up on the LED, on the LCD screen. Hold up, let's go back just to make sure that we're, I can see the whole frame. Okay. Now let's turn up the ISO way bright, and you can see some of the zebras here. And I'm toggling those on or off by pretty, pressing the button just out of frame here on top of the camera. Uh, and I typically, let's go back to setup and our presets. Like I said, I keep, really keep that, I typically keep that on, on to zebra, because I find that very, uh, very good to just click on and off time to time. Now our second option here for our second function button, uh, I usually keep that on display, but again, you can just toggle through, you know, focus, assist, uh, whatever you want, really. But I keep it on display, let, then three, I toggle on and off frame guides. But again, up to you, what how you want to use it. Let's arrow over, and you have some more choices for tally light LED, turn that on or off, I really don't use that. Uh, LED brightness, low, medium, high, uh, your hardware and software IDs, 
and your playback if you want to view all clips or a single clip. Now we have our preset functions where you can upload presets for camera functions just by hitting right there. You can import presets. Presets. You can also export. Um, then if we do have any, we can uh, refresh or edit them or delete them here. But we don't have any in here currently. Here, maybe I can make one now. Call it Film 1. So there we go. Film 1. Awesome. Okay, and then when you have another end, you can select between your various presets. So very cool. You can switch different shooting modes really easily and efficiently. So I think that's awesome. Blackmagic Design really really intelligently put together this menu system here, which is why I'm doing this video on it and why I think it's it's really something to appreciate. Finally, at the far right here, we have the LUTs. Again, Blackmagic Design is incredible with color science, color performance, and again, making it easy with usability and everything just gives you the section here to add LUTs. So we can apply a Pocket 6K film to extended video Pocket 6K film to Rec 2020 Hybrid Gamma and Pocket 6K to 2020 PQ Gamma then finally Pocket 6K to film and these will just be monitor display LUTs unless you then have turned on the baking in of the LUTs but I typically currently don't really uh, apply any LUTs and that's all my settings that's the whole camera here I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this, found this informative. If you did, please subscribe to the channel. If you like this content, obviously, subscribe. If uh, there's anything I missed or anything you want me to clarify, just let me know in the comments. So, guys, take care, and I'll see you next time.